Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing another cranial nerve reflex arc, and that's the vestibulo-ocular reflex, or VOR. Now, this is going to be a reflex that's going to involve cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6. So cranial nerve 3 is the oculomotor nerve. Cranial nerve 4 is trochlear nerve, and then cranial nerve 6 is the, is the abducent or abducens nerve. Now this reflex arc is mainly going to be involving oculomotor nerve and abducent nerve, cranial nerves 3 and 6, although there will be some contribution from the trochlear nerve depending on which way the head is turned. And that leads us to really what this reflex arc is all about. So what I want you to do is I want you to look ahead, not at the computer screen, but really maybe at the wall ahead of you or something like that. And I want you to focus on one spot. Don't let go of that one spot with your gaze. Okay? And I want you to rotate your head to the left and to the right and to the left and to the right and so on and so forth, but I want you to maintain your gaze right on that spot. Okay? So your head's moving, but your gaze remains right on that spot. And you can do the same thing moving your head up and down, although here in this video we're going to be focusing on left and right rotation of the neck. Now when you do that, assuming you have a normal response, as you rotate your head in one direction, your eyes are going to have a compensatory rotation in the opposite direction in order to maintain the gaze on that spot on the wall or whatever it is you're looking at. So in other words, if you rotate your head to the left, what direction do your eyes rotate to maintain that gaze? Well, they rotate rightwards. If you rotated your head to the right, your eyes would rotate leftwards. And so they're always going to rotate in the opposite direction. Now, this reflex is really applicable when you have somebody manually turning your head. So if you were having this test done on you in a clinic, the clinician, whoever it might be, would actually be physically moving your head. They would be rotating it. You would not be voluntarily rotating it. In this image, you're technically looking at this in the form of a cross-section. This is the patient's right over here. This is the patient's left. However, we're going to neglect that for a second. Let's just assume that this is the left side of the patient over here, and this is the right side, really to make this uh, pathway as simple as possible. Okay? So left over here, right. Now, if you look at the direction that this neck is turning, okay, it's rotating to the left. So you're doing a left neck rotation. Now, when the clinician rotated your head to the left and told you to maintain your gaze, what direction did your eyes move in order to maintain that gaze? Well, they move in the contralateral direction. They move to the right. And so in order to move to the right, let's think about what muscles would have to be active here. In terms of the left eye, in order to rotate this one to the right, we'd have to have contraction of this muscle right here, which is the medial rectus for the left eye, or the left medial rectus muscle. Now recall that the medial rectus muscle is innervated by cranial nerve 3, the oculomotor nerve. In order to rotate the right eye towards the right, which muscle would have to contract? Well, it'd have to be this one over here, but this is not the medial rectus, this is the lateral rectus in the right eye, so the right lateral rectus. And the lateral rectus muscle is innervated by the abducent nerve, or abducens nerve, cranial nerve number six. Okay? So when I rotate my eyes to the right as a result of left cervical rotation, or neck rotation, that means I actually have to contract the left medial rectus and the right lateral rectus. And so that's going to involve mainly cranial nerves 3, oculomotor, and cranial nerve 6, the, the abducens nerve. Okay? And the reason that this happens physiologically is because we've got these vestibular apparatuses on either side in the inner ear. And really neglecting the physiology here, it suffice to say when there's a quick rotation of the neck, we have the fluid in these semicircular canals within the vestibular apparatus that moves and so when we have rotation of the neck to the left, the fluid in these canals rotates in the opposite direction. And that fluid movement in a specific direction tells the eyes, at least these muscles, which ones need to contract in order to rotate the eyes in the opposite direction. And so the gist of this is rotation of head to the neck will cause the eyes to move to the right, and that would involve these red muscles contracting, the left medial rectus and the right lateral rectus. And those collectively will move the eyes to gaze toward the right. Now, if you imagine the reverse for a minute, you rotate your neck back in the right direction, 
what, dire what direction would your eyes have to then move to maintain the gaze on that spot? Well, if you rotate your head to the right, then your eyes would actually have to move toward the left. Okay, now I've just flipped this backwards, but I think you get the idea. The eyes would have to rotate to the left if we rotate the neck to the right. Okay? And in order to move the eyes to the left, what would we have to do? Well, for the right eye, we'd have to contract this muscle, which would be the right medial rectus. And then over here for the left eye, we'd have to contract the left lateral rectus. Okay? And again, so depending on which direction the eyes have to move to compensate for a contralateral neck rotation, you're going to have a different combination of extraocular muscles. And mainly when you're moving left and right, it's going to involve cranial nerves 3 and 6. Cranial nerve 4 is the trochlear nerve, and this is going to be innervating the superior oblique muscle. Um, depending on the nature of how the neck turns, you may actually have some contribution from the trochlear nerve and the superior oblique muscle as well. Okay, because you can also have movements of the neck up and down. So for example, if you have a very quick neck flexion, so bending your neck forward, that's where the practitioner does that, bend your neck forward, what direction do your eyes have to move to maintain that gaze? Well, they have to move up, right? They have to move up. That's going to involve both superior rectus muscles, which are innervated by the oculomotor nerve, if the practitioner moved your neck in a quick extension, what direction would your eyes have to move to compensate? Well, they'd have to move down. And so that's going to be more inferior rectus and inferior oblique, which are both innervated by cranial nerve 3. Okay? So the basic idea behind the vestibulo-ocular reflex is any quick rotation of the neck, which is of course done by a practitioner, will cause the fluid within these vestibular apparatuses to move in the direction opposite the neck rotation, and then that tells these muscles to contract in such a way that the eyes move in the opposite direction as the neck rotation in order to maintain gaze on a particular spot or object in front of you. Okay? And you should practice doing this movement for yourself. Again, you don't have to have somebody move your neck, but you should think about if your neck is rotated in one direction or another, what direction your eyes will have to move and what combinations of muscles would have to contract. Okay? In the next video, we'll do a follow-up on this and see uh, what clinical manifestations might occur if somebody had an issue with one or more of these three cranial nerves. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.